Y'all check this out. This is a picture of my dad and I at the Grand Prix Raceway at Walt Disney World when I was probably like four or five, something like that. This is a picture of my daughter and I on the same ride when she was a lot younger, I think probably about three. I'm at work, couldn't really think of an interesting way to start this video. By the way, this video isn't sponsored by Disney, uh, although I do love Walt Disney World, so if Disney did want to sponsor a video... <laughs> bunch of Skype lessons lately and it occurred to me that I teach a lot of the same basic exercises to folks who are beginners. Uh, just to be clear, by beginner I mean somebody who's never picked up a whistle before, day one, all the way up to maybe been playing for a couple of months or maybe even a year or so. These are some of the basic exercises that I like to get into. So hopefully if you're in that category this video will help. If you're not, if you've already kind of moved beyond that, hopefully you're, you're doing these or at least did do some of these exercises and who knows, maybe you'll still get something out of it. No promises though. So three exercises with a handful of variants in between. Now the first one is scales, uh, and you want to run the D, the G, and the A scale. I've got separate videos for each of those that I can link up here, over there. I'm not, I don't remember where that thing goes. The, the gist of it is you want to run the major scales. You can do the relative minors if you want to, but there's not really a huge need for that because you're starting, it's the same scale, you're just starting in a different position. So when you run these, run them slow. That one very slow. down the scale, up and down both ways. On the G scale, and the A scale with the G sharp. That one's tricky because you gotta half hold that, so that's why you wanna work on these. Now, when I first started playing music of any kind, I was playing piano, and I had to do a bunch of these dumb exercises and nobody ever told me why, it made me not wanna do it. So if you're like me, if you need to know why you do these, I'm gonna break that down for you. The scales, the most basic exercise, when you're first starting out, you're mostly just doing it to get your fingers used to transitioning between notes. You know, just getting used to lifting your fingers off cleanly so it's not kind of squawking and it's not doing what you don't want it to do. And you're also kind of getting used to the amount of air pressure that each note requires. As you progress, it really becomes more about knowing the keys intrinsically. So like if you're in the key of G or you're listening to a tune in the key of G and you're trying to learn it, knowing without even having to think about it that you're playing C naturals, not C sharps. That's gonna make learning tunes by ear a heck of a lot easier. So that's why we're, we're doing this exercise. That's why we start with this. Number two is tap and cut scales. So you're kind of, it's the same thing as the scales, but you're mixing in some ornaments. You might call this just a variation on a, of a scale exercise. I like to think of it as something different. Here's the basic idea. All right, so you're just going up the scale and you go back down the scale. and you're just getting used to those transitional notes. The other one you wanna do is simpler, and it's just repeating a, the, uh, the same basic note as you interrupt it with an ornament, so. Right, Go, again, just going up and down the scales, but you're putting in an ornament in the middle, you're doing the cut. I would do the same thing with the tap, it's not quite as flexible, but. Right, up and down. And again, we're dealing with beginner exercises. I would start with the cut. I'm not sure why, it just seems like it's easier for people to get. So I would start with that, work in the tap, and you can even progress to a roll scale. If you're so inclined. But again, we're talking beginner exercises, start with the cut, move on from there. Now, as far as why we're doing this one, I'm gonna straight up Miyagi you on this, because there's a ton of tunes where you can use the, pretty much every tune, really. Uh, I was just teaching a tune out on the ocean. I think I played four of those cuts as transitional notes in just that one tune. You can use it all over the place. It always works really well. Now, if you're really feeling this one, go nuts. Use, rather than just going up straight up the scale, like that, you can do it in thirds. You can come up with all kinds of variants on this uh, because tunes will use that also, that you know jumping by thirds where you can put a cut or a tap or a roll in between them. But again, start with the cuts, keep it basic, just a regular scale. And I would say do the same thing with the G scale if you want to. In this case, it doesn't really matter what scale you're using. It's more a matter of getting your fingers used to that transition uh, and used to putting those cuts in there, separating a note, transitioning between two notes. That's what I would say is your best bet. Now the last one, number three, is octave jumping. I've done a whole other video on that. I'll post a thing 
again, I, wherever that goes, hopefully I can post a couple of these on one video, but I'm just gonna run it real quick so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and all you're doing is what it sounds like. You're doing a scale, again, still a scale, but we're jumping the octave, so. And on this one, I would just use the D scale because that gives you the most amount of range. You have two full octaves that you can use. Now, why are we doing this one? Well, there are tunes that do straight octave jumps where you're just bouncing the octave, but that's not really what this is about. This is more about understanding how much pressure is required, air pressure is required for each note. The tin whistle, it's really easy to break that note where it kind of gets that raspy thing where you're where you're not quite in between the octaves and you've just kind of made a, a horrible sound. The goal here is to just understand how much air is required. And you don't want to be, you, you want to separate and hit that note as cleanly as you possibly can. That's just simply so you don't have to be thinking about it while you're playing tunes. Because we've got a lot to think about. You've got the fingers, you've got the ornaments, you've got the style, you've got phrasing. You shouldn't have to be thinking about how much air do I need to hit this note. That should just be in there, ready to go. So you just fire it off. You know that note's going to be clean. This is an exercise I still do. Uh, I wouldn't say I do it every day, but especially if I get a new whistle or if I'm you know, borrowing a whistle from somebody to try it out, that's pretty much the first thing I do because I, I need to know how much air I'm going to need for each note because it's not all the same. Uh, even whistles from the same maker, not going to be exactly the same. And you just want to run through a little bit just to get, make sure you have a good understanding of how much air you need so you're not squawking notes because nobody wants to hear that. The other question I get a lot is how long should I be practicing? For an answer to that, I like to go with practice until you're not getting anything out of it. It's not the same thing as practice until you're not having fun because you could be working on a tune or an ornament or an exercise, whatever it might be, and you're just not getting it. It's just not working right. But you know, if you just give it a couple more runs through, you're probably gonna get it and then it's gonna feel awesome. So go until you're not getting anything out of it. If you're just not interested, that's probably a good time to stop. Now, how long should you do these types of exercises versus say playing tunes? Well, let's just pick a random number. Let's say you're gonna practice for 30 minutes. What I tell people is spend the beginning five minutes and the ending five minutes doing the boring stuff, scales, octave jumps, basic ornament scales, things like that. Don't spend your whole time on it because if you do that, you're probably not going to enjoy playing it. But if you spend some time on it, just at the beginning and the end, you're going to kind of lock those fundamentals down. Spend the middle part of your time playing tunes, learning new tunes, working on ornament. But if you can give this just a bit of time at the beginning and the end, I think it's going to make a huge difference. All right, guys, that's it. I hope this helps. Uh, I know I've covered all these exercises in various other videos, but I thought I'd do one just specifically for basic beginner stuff. So use these, tell me if it helps. And also, by the way, comment down below if you guys have some other exercises. Maybe you all have some things that you like to do that have saved you time or, or made you better quicker, that kind of thing. Let me know, I'd love to hear them and we can talk about those and I'll, maybe I'll start using them myself. And otherwise, see you all in the next one. Cheers.